Hello there everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to my bedroom. Please do make yourself comfortable, have a seat on the bed, lounge out if you want, grab a bag of M&Ms, maybe use this little wooden chair or just sit on the floor while I take you on a tour around my virtual room and showcase once again one of the very best VR applications that you can get your hands on right now if you have a PC that's capable of running VR. This is MUVR, a free, it's completely free, piece of software that allows you to, I guess, regress back into your childhood, um, or even just kind of create a dream room or escapist place that you can come into to play old emulated games and consoles on big virtual CRT TVs. It really is absolutely stunning. And that's why I keep returning to it and I keep making videos about it. I think I do one a year. This is my third video about MUVR because it still feels like there isn't enough kind of recognition or hype or understanding around just how cool this app is within the VR community. Yes, a lot of people know it exists and I'm sure most people who see this video will know because the channel has been around for a while now and you've probably seen my previous videos. But for all those new VR users or people who still haven't seen this, I wanted to make a video today just to showcase how amazing this application is. Now before I start playing any of the games, and I've got an N64 here, GameCube ready to be set up, PlayStation with light guns laying around, so we'll play some light gun games, and this is actually a Dreamcast. Um, they haven't put the model for a Dreamcast in here yet, so that's a shame, but PlayStation looking spot on, perfect. Look at this GameCube. Oh my god. Can we open it? No, it opens that side. Oh, <laughs> it's even got the handle. Oh, I'm trying to plug it in. It's even got that handle. I, I never understood why the GameCube had that handle. Like I was going to be like taking it to a friend's house, like walking down the street with it, like a briefcase. Um, very strange, but the GameCube is one of my favorite consoles of all time. So good to see that in here accurately represented. And the N64, of course, as well. Now, I'll go into all the details about the consoles in a moment, but first, let me just kind of show you around the room itself. Now, as you'll notice, I've got some very specific posters uh, adorning the walls and the furniture in the room. Now, I've handpicked all of these posters. Everything you see in here has been handpicked by me and represents things that I love. It's a very accurate representation of what I probably would put all over my walls if I was still of that age where I wanted to put things on my walls. So we've got Dark Souls, big Dark Souls fan, Cloverfield. Uh, I love kind of big monster movies and I particularly love the hype and the build up around that movie, the way they marketed it with no name and just kind of a lot of kind of mystery and intrigue building, loved it. Again, horror fan, so Dead Space, we got The Thing. I love Studio Ghibli or Ghibli, I never know how to say it, but Howl's Moving Castle, one of my favorites. Old Boy, one of my favorite films, cool shirts, I love their stuff, I'm wearing it right now. It's just crazy, like, there's so much detail in here, and you can change these posters on the fly. Yeah, here he is. <laughs> here, I have to put Pink Guy in here, Filthy Frank needs a shout out every single time. Um, you can change all of this stuff, so it's completely customizable to you, to who you are, to the things you love. Now that goes down to the bed sheets as well. I've put some uh, Zelda bed spread on today so we've got the Zelda uh, bed sheets and pillow set and I've changed the floor to a hardwood floor this is one of the defaults that comes in the game but you could change this as well it could be a carpet it could be hardwood with a rug it could be whatever you want it to be it could even be that kind of crazy patterned floor that you used to see in bowling alleys and arcades that kind of stuff now I have also changed the ceiling now you'll see, I actually used to have these, you'll see it's covered in those little glow-in-the-dark stars and they actually work, okay? So I'll turn the light off, right? Now they're not glowing right now because it's still, it's still, you know, it's daytime, it's the middle of the day. It's a nice, kind of a chilly autumn day, it's a fall day. So let's, uh, let's fast forward the time to the evening. <laughs> there we go, it's now the dead of night. And you've got all the stars glowing above you. Now that is a cool visual thing. It's a cool visual treat. It's nice to be able to see that. But it also bleeds into the feeling of playing this game. Because I can now sit here, you know, with the lights off. 
with just the illumination of the stars on the ceiling. And I can flick on one of these consoles and I can play a game and kind of bask in the glow of the TV and the lights above. And it's just, it captures a feeling. It really does kind of, it tunes into something. It, it perfectly encapsulates what it was like to be of a certain age playing a game on one of these TVs in your own room, in your own space. Look at it, look at it. Look at the way it reflects on all the walls, the colors. Like, and my shadow. I mean, how can you... <laughs> how can you not love this? Okay, now I should have control over the game now. I can't remember what I've got my button set up to. Uh, I think they're on my left controller. So, all of the games in here and the ROMs, they run on emulator cores. Um, I can't remember which ones this is using, but it uses RetroArch to um, basically figure out the best cores to use. And you drop the ROMs in, and then you can play them in here. Now, I won't sit and play tons of Banjo-Kazooie. I'll get past the first cutscenes, and I'll run around a bit and show you how well it runs. And then we'll jump onto a, a different game or a different thing. I don't know why I picked Banjo-Kazooie. This game takes so long to get going. I'm not knocking it. It is one of my favorites, but you can't skip this first cutscene. Hello, Bottles. How's it going, bro? Absolutely immaculate. Capitalism! Capitalism! <laughs> I've never noticed that. I thought it was just a normal can of Coca-Cola. What are these? Cheetos Paws. They look delicious. It's a big grab bag as well. Right, I'm finally playing. Here we go. Okay, so, as you can see, these games run <laughs> flawlessly as well. Now, this is only the opening section of Banjo, so things could change. Let's get past bottles here. Go, 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 go. I freaking love the voices in this. So good. Go, We're off now. Here we go. Okay, so I can just get straight into this now. Kill these guys. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Got my roll. Move the camera with the right touch controller. And everything else is obviously... Ah, no! Is done with the left. Now, the controls are kind of pre-mapped. I do think you have control over changing them. But they, they're mapped in a way that makes sense. So, right trigger is kind of my main attack. Um, which is the B button, I believe, on N64. So, the retro arc cores have already been kind of configured to work really well if you're using touch controllers whilst playing this. Hello! Gimme, gimme, gimme. Right, okay. Now, you can also position yourself around, so if I click both the sticks in, that frees me up from the TV and I can move around. I can come over here. I can flick the lights ah, back on. Um, and then to go back into the game, you just point at the TV, press A, and you're locked in again. So I can't now move and my controllers are now moving the game rather than me around the, the digital world so it's, it's just really well thought out and I just it surprises me now I saw um, I saw Mike from VR Oasis he did a tweet about it he was showing off the new uh, one of the new features which is the new gun cons and uh, the amount of people that just didn't know this app exists and I've covered it twice before on the channel and I'll continue to cover it like once a year if need be just to keep getting the word out there because I love emulation I love preserving older games that are kind of impossible to get hold of anymore unless you have hundreds of thousands of pounds because they're so expensive to buy and being able to play them in VR like this is an absolute dream you can also access the RetroArch menu if you press down all the face buttons Ah, there you go. You can get into the RetroArch menus and you can start to play around with everything that RetroArch allows you to do. Is it Arc or Arch? I don't know. I think it's Arch. Um, but you can come in here and you can start playing around with all of these features. And it is a full version. So you can play with shaders, you've got cheats, you can create save states, all sorts of crazy stuff. Very, very cool. But for now, I'm going to come away from Banjo. I'm going to turn that off. Turn the TV off. There we go. Now that's just one example of how good the emulation is in here. Now, I will work my way up and I'll show some GameCube in a mo. But let's change the time of day back to the middle of the day. I prefer it when it's a little bit sunnier. There we go, like 1 o'clock. The sun's beating in. Yeah, we are looking good. Okay, so all of these consoles can be allocated spots within the room. They can be picked up and moved around. So let's pick up the PlayStation. I can move it around. I can sit wherever I want it to sit. I can unplug it. 
so it's now not plugged into the TV. That is just a loose PlayStation with a copy of Point Blank in it, which is a great game. Put Point Blank up there, and uh, yeah, I can put that anywhere. I can put it up on the shelf, and I can spawn in another one if I want to. So I can bring up the menu, go to Inventory and Systems, I can get a PlayStation, grab it. I've got another PlayStation there, and I can pop it just down there in front of that Panasonic TV. So you've got complete control over how you lay these rooms out, and I think that's where this game comes into its own and really starts to lean into really appealing to people who want to create a space and have complete control over how that space looks. Now when you load into the game, all these posters are just defaults. So I've changed them all as I say, got the shining there, a bit of hunt show down there, um, some little ones here, so like Jurassic Park, Bioshock, Isaac, Bo Burnham, Doom. You have complete control over all of that and you have complete control over how all the games look. Now it does take a bit of work but you can get the labels for all of the games. So as you can see, all these games that I've got laying on here, they look like they should. So we've got Sonic 2 looking like pretty much exactly as the Mega Drive cartridge would look, complete with a label on the back. Um, Donkey Kong Country there again, looking basically spot on, like a spot on replica of the real world thing. Um, sadly, the PlayStation games don't come in boxes. They're just loose discs, which makes me very sad because I would never treat my discs like this. But again, you can have the artwork on them if you can find the artwork and drop it into the right folder. So if you love to tinker and you love to kind of create something that feels very unique to you, this application has has legs. Like you could be using this and tinkering with it infinitely. And I think you'd be still finding new things in here, <laughs> you know, months or years after setting it up because the devs are so dedicated to making it as good as possible and they keep adding new things. Uh, point blank. Let's put point blank in there. Uh, let's close that. Close that. Um, let's plug this one into this TV. So if I just plug it in there, that's now in and on. Turn the power on and I should start loading up point blank. Oh, that noise. Why was it so ominous though? Like, why does it sound like the world's about to end? Oh, and then that. That's like a powerful nostalgic noise. That that takes me right back, like, in an instant. Okay, so Point Blank is a light gun game. You probably know that. Hopefully most of you have played it. It's, it's absolutely incredible. So with this one, when I click on the TV and I start going into game mode, I'm immediately given a Namco Gun Con. Now, the, this is a new uh, feature in the game, which is very, very cool. Before, I think the default was always the Duck Hunt gun but now you've got these amazing look at it perfect replicas i had one of these of these namco guns now there's also a few different versions there's the red one i think there's an orange one as well shut up you um and light gun games in here are a, a particular favorite of mine that was perfect yeah look at that aimed perfectly i played such a disgusting amount of this game oh come on no oh bugger uh, okay, we're just going to go straight into an arcade mode, and we're going to just play some mini games. This was kind of like WarioWare before WarioWare existed. Just loads of light gun themed mini games. Uh, okay, we're going to do the beginner stage. And I guess we're just going to do whatever it tells us to do. Octopus. Oh, no, these. I like this one. I like this one. Oh, right, here we go. Let's get into it. I want to kind of hold it with two things. <laughs> Look how good this is! Look how good this is. This is like better and more accurate than it ever was on my actual TV when I owned the thing. I'm better at this than I've ever been. No civilians dying today, bro. Whoa! Look at that. Quota complete. 37 targets. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Can you imagine how, like, incredible a native Quest version of something like this would be? It wouldn't work, I don't think. The Quest is a pretty capable emulator. But being able to run all this and emulate, I don't think you'd be able to do it. What we're doing, shoot tanks. Wait, what? What's happening? Oh my god, I'm terrible at this one. Sorry, these tanks need to not be coming for me. He's going to die otherwise. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Tanks, tanks, tanks. Thanks, thanks, thanks. No. <laughs> He's going to die. Oh, he didn't die. It's okay. We kept him alive. Yes. Open it up. 
point blank, goes back on the shelf, and we stick something like Alien Trilogy in there, because why the hell not? That was an absolutely incredible game as well. Power that bad boy on. Hello. I just want to hear the noise again. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Cool, yeah, so it does take a little bit of setting up this. It isn't, um, it isn't plug and play. Like, the application itself is completely free to download. It's open, it's not open source, but you just need to join a Discord and you can download the app and start playing and start configuring it to how you want it. Like, I don't want that there. I'm going to put that in front of my door. Now, one thing that I've got working today, which I never got working before, is the VHS player. Now, this is uh, particularly exciting. So, if I plug the VHS player in using the SCART. There we go. All right, pop that back up there. I like to keep this room looking nice. And then I come over here and take one of my tapes. That's right. VHS tapes. You can also play these. Now, <laughs> this is probably my uh, favorite feature of this. Um, because it's new to me, I haven't played with this before today. Okay, get in. There we go. That goes in. Push it in. Oh my god, it's so good. Play it and check this out. This is... <laughs> this is phenomenal. So, these are tapes <sighs> that are linked to YouTube videos. There it is. So, this is linking directly to the original trailer for Jurassic Park on YouTube. Living biological attractions so astounding. Capture the imagination oh. of the entire planet. The most phenomenal discovery of our time. The most phenomenal discovery of our time. MUVR. It's so good. Now you could, in theory, have that play the entire film. If you had the file for the entire film, you can link that tape to the film and sit here and, and watch it in here. But I haven't done that. I've just linked these VHSs to the trailers for the films. Look at it! It's so good! And you've got like the scratches on the TV. And it looks really authentic. It's amazing. It's like a little bit laggy because it's having to pull from the internet, I guess. It's pulling that trailer straight through and buffering it. How good is that, right? Stop that. Eject that. Give me my Jurassic Park tape back. So if you had the full VHS file, for Jurassic Park, or you had like the Blu-ray rip, or like a DVD rip, or whatever, you could link it to a VHS in here and sit and watch the entirety of Jurassic Park or any film in here on a big CRT TV whilst playing Banjo Kazooie or something, because you can have multiple running at the same time. And obviously, this is going to be a trailer for Alien. I haven't seen if this one works. Let me check this one. Uh, it should. Like, I can't imagine why it wouldn't work. Yeah, I remember this trailer. Oh my god, it's so good. This is it's like a time machine, this game. It's like a weird little nostalgic time machine. And you have full control over it. You can also do CDs, I believe, for music. Um... But I haven't played around with that aspect just yet. Right, let's put the PlayStation on the shelf. Um, let's pop it just here. Let's close that lid down as well. Let's not leave that up. Right, so the Sega Dreamcast is a bit of a weird one. Um, as I said, this one is... Get out of there, VHS. This one's strange purely because they don't have the right model. So it's using... Um, it's using cartridges, which is obviously wrong. But it's still cool to be able to pick the cartridge up. Oh, he says. Pop it. Pop it in the top. <laughs> Power that bad boy on. And then again, in theory, this should be House of the Dead. So here we go. We click here. We're in. Different gun. This one's got the, the orange trim around it. Come on now. I'm sitting far too close to the TV. Ah! I'm going to get the squarest eyes you've ever seen. Reload by shooting off the screen, obviously. How could anyone do this? I don't know, bro. This is always one of my go-to games to showcase this... Uh, modding software because it's like Dreamcast it's a little bit more demanding than like N64 or Snares or Mega Drive and it runs really well I'll cancel that don't worry about it let him die it's a tiny bit laggy but you can drop down a lot of the kind of the graphical settings in the room I've got this all running on high so 
you can free up some performance by sacrificing ah, some of the room. Come on now. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. Yeah, well, you're dead, mate. Okay, ultimate test. Let's see how the GameCube fares. Now, I haven't played GameCube in here. Um, I feel like... Oh, I don't know. I feel like it might really struggle to run. Um, or run well, at the very least. Purely because... Um, the game, GameCube is kind of a unique console to emulate anyway. It, the way it... Um, I think it's something to do with its, its shader caching. The way that it did that is very hard to emulate. Did I just knock that candle on the floor? I did. Right, where does that go? In the back of there. There we go. Um, yeah, the way the way it kind of like built up its shader cache is um, quite interesting or quite unique to the console. So emulating it is tough. I've, I've found that across the years. But let's see. We can only see. We can only try. Oh... Well, that bit worked, so that's quite good. Um, Super Mario Sunshine. I love this game. Okay, this is running quite well so far. But it's only the intro cutscene. Oh my god, I love this game so much. There he is! He's going on bloody holiday! He went on his bloody holidays and he still ended up on an amazing adventure. And he had to save the world. Give me a can of Coke. Give me a Snickers bar. Oh, I can't have it. Okay, well I can run around on the menu screen. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> right. I reckon it's probably going to run quite poorly. Ah! When I get in there. But let's try and get in there and see what happens. Yeah, so as I thought, GameCube isn't running particularly well. Um, it's pretty laggy. and The music's like stuttery and stuff. But you do have complete control over everything that RetroArch kind of allows you to tinker with in terms of getting these games running. So if you know emulation and you're good at getting things running so if you struggled with gamecube in the past and you want to get it running there's so many things you can change in here in the settings that will help you to make this run correctly and there's guides online about the best things to do um there's the, the cheats and things that, that kind of help with culling you can tinker with it and you can get it running correctly but gamecube is represented might need a bit more work to get it running but it's in here and it's very, very cool. It's very, very cool. Oh, I love it so much. You can even have a spooky camp out. Now, you're on your own, but uh, you can turn the game into like kind of a, a scary, spooky, spooky simulator. Now, you could obviously sit and play horror games by torchlight. Like, I could have that angled at the TV. Like, I could sit it up here like that. It's rolling, but I could put it there like that. It wouldn't kind of work. I might need to put it somewhere else. Maybe on the chair and like angle it towards the TV. My hat fell off. Um, so I could put it like that. Like there. And I could sit and play like a spooky game uh, like Silent Hill or something. There we go. There's such a big portion of people still that just don't know this exists and that shocks me. Um, and I want more people to come and check this out. Come and customize your own room. Make it comfy. So many of the consoles are represented here. I think most of them are. So as I say, I've got SNES here, um, Mega Drive, PlayStation 1, PS2 is in here as well, Dreamcast. I believe the handhelds, Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, GameCube, N64, VHS tapes. It is, um, yeah, it's, it's quite incredible just how good this app is and i just want more people to see it and really understand how cool it is come and check it out join the discord download it start uh start emulating in vr today and really understand just how amazing this is we're going in we're gonna go kill these aliens oh my god this is quite hard to control no no <laughs> right i'm gonna leave it here i only wanted this to be a short video today hopefully you've enjoyed once again this little look at MUVR. I can't stress it enough. Ah! It's entirely free. This isn't going to cost you anything. You do need to know where to get your ROMs from. And you do need to have a little bit of kind of know-how. Is that another... Is there a creature by me? No. Is there a creature by me? Oh, I think that was a creature by me. You need to have a bit of know-how when it comes to setting up emulators, getting... Um, BIOS if you're going to use things like PlayStation. Um, it isn't plug and play. It will require a tiny bit of work. But if you get it running, it's it's an absolutely superb experience that I think every VR user should 
should experience at least once. Everyone who's got that nostalgic bone in their body, which is literally everyone, um, come and create the room you either had when you were a child or wanted, you know, whatever it may be. It's absolutely phenomenal. When do the actual, you know, the big xenomorphs turn up? Oh, shotgun. We need the shotgun. Okay, how do I change my gun? Oh, that's a map. Way! Look at that! Look at those effects! Ahead of their time! Where are the xenomorphs? This is a game about... Ah, there he is! I think he was there! There he is! Oh my god, it's so dark! I can barely see him! Uh, come here, you! Ah, take that! And that! And that! Oh my god, he's still alive! Oh my god, he's still alive! Okay, he's dead. Alright, I hope you've enjoyed, guys. If you have, please do leave a like, leave a comment, and hit subscribe. I hope you've enjoyed hanging out in my bedroom for a little while. This really is... Uh, very representative of a room that I would have had as a child. Um, I think if I rewound time from now, like by like 20 years, these are the things I would adorn my walls with because I love all these things now so much. Hope you've enjoyed. Please do leave a like, leave a comment, hit subscribe, come download MUVR, get some VHSs in here, create a amazing digital game, video, and music collection on these shelves. And just share it with that community because they want more people in there. They want more members. And I think it deserves the attention. Take care, guys. I'll see you soon for another one. See you later.